love their style. But we went to the opening at Shafazi Gallery, and uh, it was like a thousand people outside waiting for them on uh, Mercer Street. So I don't know, I'm taking some pictures of Zeph and Revolt on a stoop across the street, and then we see Basquiat Warhawk coming from Houston Street, walking down towards the. So I kind of said, "Okay, hold on one sec. Excuse me." I kind of skedaddled diagonally across the street and stopped in front of them before they got to the crowd. And I, this is what I always used to say to Jean-Michel. I'd be like, yo, what up, Gene? <laughs> <laughs> he would roll his eyes. He'd be like, it's Jean. <laughs> like, oh, dip. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm not good with exotic names, Duke. So I go, yo, you mind if I catch a quick flick? And Warhol's looking at me like, who is this kook? And Basquiat said, he's cool. So they paused me for a moment. I got one shot. And that was it, you know. And I went back to the other two guys. They were like, oh, shit. I was like, eh. So that was actually a proud moment for me because I shot two Negress, please. So I, I shot... I need close by streets. Do not freak a zoid. Um, so, yeah, that was a proud day for me, photography-wise, because I shot two dynamic duos within five minutes. You know, like, you know, my work and the people I've shot, my body of work, I basically, I'm going to just tell you, between me and the lamppost, uh -huh. to me, taking pictures of people was just like collecting baseball cards. I was like, oh, I want him, I want her, I want them in my collection. Right. Luckily, <clears throat> luckily, uh, there's money in that business, photography. So I got good. You know, when I worked for the Lynn Goldsmith agency, she sent me to a lot of, you know, movie premieres and parties and whatnot. And, oh, I used to use my press pass. My man David Hirschgrave from Paper Magazine gave me a press pass. You know, I would sneak into shit. One time I stuck into a party at the Plaza Hotel. Mm -hmm. And then I went into the stairway to smoke a joint. And fucking, you know who Ahmet Erdogan is? Yeah. Who started Atlantic Records? He's right. like smoking a cigarette in the stairway. I'm like, oh, dip. Hey, you mind if I smoke a joint while you smoke a cigarette? He goes, sure. So we hung out for five minutes. I took a few pictures of him in the stairway. And that was cool. You know, it's just important to have my camera because the way I lived, I could run into, you know, kooky characters. That happened a few times. Oh, another time I snuck into the, when they started that stupid ass Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Awards, or whatever. It used to be in the uh, Waldorf. I snuck in one time through the kitchen and like through all the back staircases and shit. And then I see Keith Richards and Ike Turner going in an elevator. So I fucking finagled myself and I jumped in with them and took a picture of them and I got yanked out right after I took the picture. But I got the picture. That's what's important. Yeah, those two. Oh my God, two kooks. That one's in my book, The Rickford Files, classic New York photos. You also had the opportunity to work with the late, great Eazy -E. What was that like? Oh, man. I love that guy. So cool. Such a nice man. Such a nice young man. <laughs> I remember I went to go interview him for this magazine and uh, at the, the Hilton in Midtown. And so I go knock on the door. This is 1993. I knock on the door. He opens the door with a big fucking cannon of a blunt holding it with two hands. <laughs> and he goes, for you, Ricky. And I'm like, why? <laughs> oh, my God. I said, this is going to be a fun interview. So we got zooted, rooted, balluted. I brought my video camera. I think some of the, the footage is on uh, YouTube. So he was fucking with the video camera. I was, you know, I dubbed him the black John Cassavetes. And uh, we just had a bunch of laughs, dude. Very cool dude. I'm sorry to see him go.
You, Actually, some of the pictures I shot of him at the table with the pot and all that shit. One of his daughters who lives in Atlanta, she's like a big shot now. She actually reenacts the picture. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it. She dresses like him, does the same pose, and it looks like, you know, father, daughter kind of thing. It's interesting, flattering. You have several books out. How do you know when it's time to show the world your work, and how do you limit uh, the pictures that go in it, and how do you hold back for later? I'm sorry. I was just reading this kooky. Uh, you got some kooks on here. Say that again, my man. All right. My good man. You have uh, you have several books out. Uh, how do you yeah. know when it's time to show the world your work, and how do you? Well, you know, I mean, getting a book deal and getting a book out there is, you know. It's a good thing. I mean, you know, it's what a lot of, you know, photographers would love. I just, you know, sometimes wait for the opportunities. You know, I'm always ready to put shit out. It's just waiting for the opportunities. And I will say this about my books. They're all fucking bittersweet. And I'm going to say that because there's people that I big up, I gave big ups to, like either in my acknowledgements or I put a picture of them and they turn out to be fucking two-faced backstabbers later on. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I got, I don't want to name names, but there's some people, oh my God, I wish I could go back and fucking edit them out. Yeah. A lot of jerk-offs out there. A lot of jerk-offs. Pulled crazy shit on me. I've had people pull some fucking whack shit on me. There's a couple. There's about ten people I want dead. <laughs> I can make. I can make that phone call. I just don't want to get caught because jail is not for me. Right. You can't be a, a caged lion. In so. twenty in twenty twenty, what do you? Uh, how do you feel about the state of photography? The state of photography. As far as everybody. Who are you? Like Who are you? Horatio Alger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I don't, you know, listen. Well, I mean, there's some really cool cats. You know Steve Sweatpants? Yeah. He's on, a, I love that fucking kid. He is so dope. What a, he has an incredible mind, an incredible eye, and he's just very pleasant. And so... I like his shit, even though, like, with a lot of shit, like music, movies, culture, I'm really stuck in the past. Like, you know, like, I love shit in the 60s and 70s, and, and I'm like, <coughs> I'll be like, today, everything, shit is whack, shit is whack, but with uh, with him, he's dope, but I also love the photographer Mel Cole, Mel D. Cole, and uh, I like uh, Jonathan Mannion. And uh, I like Cheryl Dunn. I like her shit. I know, you know, I just, you know, I like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I like, but I know when I see it and I like it, I like it. We'll put it like that. But most of all, I like if a person, the person comes first. A lot of times, if they're cool, I like their shit. There's a fucking one photographer. He's such a jerk off. He's such a doofus. He go. He calls himself a legend. And I'm just like, I just want to tell him, listen, Duke. First of all, you're a fucking doofus. All right. <laughs> Second of all, you shouldn't be calling yourself a legend. You know how tacky that is? But people still, you know, idiots. They still, you know, they're into him. So I'm like, eh, you can't fight it. Who else? There was another guy. Oh, another photographer. He calls himself a god. And I fucking, I blocked him. And the dude still shows up to my events. <laughs> That's one thing I don't understand. When, Listen, I'm good hearted. I'm a good person. I really am. And I basically, as I say at the top of my page, on my page, I give what I get. So... You know, I love giving love, embracing people, but <coughs> when whack people come, you know, bringing their whack shit to me, you know, I can't fake the funk, dude. If you're whack, I'm just going to be like, yo, get away from me. You're a jerk off. Right. So there are per people who think I'm mean, but 
I just, you know, I've just been through too much shit with too many jerk offs. You know, I'm scarred from jerk offs. So, you know, I'm just real. You know, if I feel someone's like fucking trying to fucking pull one over on me, being fake, you know, I, I can see right through it. Or if they put whack comments on my posts, mm -hmm. you know, I block them. I'm like, yo, get the fuck out of here. You're a jerk off. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. It's, listen, I'm me. And whatever, you know, whatever people, however it, it unfolds, so be it. But I'm going to be me. I'm not going to go around fucking tiptoeing on eggshells to please the consensus that's out. So, you know, so, you know, that's it. We got about 10 minutes before we get out wow. of here. Yo, you're a handsome devil. I hate yeah. you. Me? Yeah, I hate you. Come on, man. Don't be like that. <laughs> <laughs> now you're very cool. I like you, man. I'm going to buy you a cup of coffee when I see you. Hey, when everything clears up, I'm coming to New York to see you, okay? And I'm going to take you All up right. the for sure. Yo, you're very cool, Duke. You're very cool. Um, I know when you first <laughs> came, uh, approached me, I was like, Ugh, nah, that was because you had somebody on that made me go, ugh. But I felt bad that night. I said, you know, because you said, oh, thank you anyway for considering. You were very proper. So that was like, that made me feel like, oh, man, that kid's very proper. Go back, apologize, fess up, and offer yourself. And so... I appreciate that. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing about me. And you can ask my best friends. If I go off on somebody or I'm nasty and then I realize I misjudged them, I'll go back and fess up and apologize. I'm like, yo, I'm sorry, dude. I fucked up. I misjudged you. My bad. It's just that I'm scarred from jerk offs. No doubt. And, and corn balls. So, but I will, you know, I try to, you know, do the right thing. Believe me. Hey, I do appreciate the opportunity. Um, can you tell everybody what you have coming up in the future? Oh, my God. Dude, I don't know. We're on hold right now, huh? Well, I what have some people. I have some people in Detroit I do a lot of business with. 1X Run. Motherfucker, love them. Real classy mofos. They put out a lot of my shit. They, uh, <laughs> are, are they uh, in Eastern Market over there? Yes. Yeah, I'm familiar with them. Yeah, very cool people. You know, they're, they're kind of like, you know, there's a big scene in Detroit. Right. Very cool peoples. Love them. So they're putting out a bunch of shit. That's it. I'm hoping this documentary comes out of me somewhere because I want to be inspirational. I mean, it's funny. I told them, look, there's some serious shit in there. But I said, look, the movie, you got to make a lot of shit on a humorous tip. Because to me... That's real talent. You know, when you when you when you do some dope shit with a humorous twist to it, that's real talent. Being witty, like that's the kind of people I really respect. Humor. Dope. On top of dopeness. You're a very dope individual. Can you uh What <laughs> Yo, can I use you as a reference? Absolutely. I'm going to call you. I'm going to need your number. So when I meet a, a cool person or a cool chick on the street, I'm going to be like, yo, I got a reference right here. My man in Indiana. He's, he's a little country. He's a little country, but he's cool. <laughs> hey, can you uh, shout out your uh, social media so everybody can follow you? What is my social media? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Oh, Ricky Powell. What are you, an idiot? <laughs> no. <laughs> What are you, Jake off? <laughs> no, it's the Lazy Hustle on Instagram and, you know, Ricky Powell on Facebook and, you know, the hashtag, yes, I am very dope. <laughs> <laughs> I do, you know what? I am flattered. A lot of people tell me my hashtag game is pretty primo. Is that right? Yeah, it's fun, too. See, that's the thing. If you love what you're doing and it's fun, it's going to transcend. And then hopefully you can make cheddar. So listen, you are my permanent team. Anything no I could do for you, my resources, 
are your resources. Right. All right? right? I mean that. I like <laughs> I like your style very much. Thank you. And believe me, if I thought different, you'd know. Yeah. I'm really. letting you know you are very proper, very positive. I like that about you. Thank you. I'm going to plug you in with some cool people. I'm going to give you my phone number. We're going to talk. I want to hook you up with some good guests okay. to help enhance your ambiance. I appreciate that. My pleasure. And uh, you take care during these uh, uncertain times, and we will get uh, uh, together. Okay. Thanks for the time. tip. All right. We'll be on the check-in. Yes, sir. I'm on your dick a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> don't, get, don't get it twisted. All right. <laughs> All right, Thanks, my man. All right. Love you. So Love you, young buck. Love you, you man. man. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, yes. And thank you to the people who, who threw their kook isms in there. I appreciate you, too. My All man. Right. All right. Talk to you soon.